In this week's upload, I'm gonna tell you guys why I think it's so important to quarantine your livestock and how you can do it yourself. Hey, what's going on reefers? My name's Blaine. This is the King Tide Corals channel. If you guys are watching this video, I wanna say thank you for stopping by. Also, to everyone who's been subscribing, I wanna say thank you so much. You guys are awesome. The kind words, the appreciation, and the motivation you guys are giving me makes this totally worth it, and it makes it absolutely so amazing and fun to do. So, thank you guys again. I really appreciate it. With that being said, in this week's upload, I'm gonna be talking about the quarantining process in the saltwater hobby and why I think it's so important. It's a simple thing you can do yourself, and in my opinion, it's the best way to keep your tanks clean from parasites and any disease without having to worry about bringing in something into your system that could end up killing your favorite fish or your favorite coral. So stay tuned. I'm going to be showing you guys why quarantining is so important and also how you can set up a hospital tank at your place. So thanks guys. Stay tuned. Before we get into building the quarantine tank, let's talk a little bit about the why. Now, why are we doing this in the first place? What's the importance of quarantining our fish? Now, some obvious reasons are you're trying to help with the prevention of disease or parasites. Fish coming in from fish stores, you don't really know what the other fish in the systems had or the fish had in the first place when it came to the store. So it helps with the prevention of diseases and parasites like ick or velvet. These are some common ones in the aquarium hobby. Some other things that people don't realize that quarantining helps with during the acclimation process is getting your fish acclimated to a tank in general, getting it acclimated to your new system. Also, maybe getting it acclimated to the new food you feed. So quarantining can be really beneficial in the long run for all kinds of different reasons, but I think the main ones are definitely to help with the spread of disease and parasites. So in my opinion, that's kind of the why of why we do this whole quarantine process. Let's start talking about how you build your quarantine tank. All right guys, so here is what I have set up for my quarantine tank. Now, because I use nano tanks for my reefs, I don't need a really big quarantine tank. Now this is a five gallon fluval spec. Now this is a perfect little size for what I'm gonna be quarantining. The things that I have inside here are the heater thermometer combo here in the back, the power head that pushes the filter. Here's the light here up top. There's two pieces of PVC pipe in here. I'm using those as hides. These are better than having rocks and other things in your quarantine tank because you can take them out and you can scrub them and clean them easier. Other things that I would recommend having in a quarantine tank is an ammonia alert. It's a good thing from Seachem that you can just add on inside your tank and it helps alert for high ammonia levels. And also another thing that's really good to have is an emergency rescue air backup system. Now this is a complete emergency air pump kit. I can just hook up to this if I'm out of town or something like that. And if it triggers and the power goes off, it'll turn it on and it'll run the little air pump. So there'll still be continuous flow in this tank. Now this is what I run for my little quarantine tank. And let's go ahead, get some water in here and get this thing filled up. three days later. All right guys, quarantine tank's been running for a couple days now and I wanna put some beneficial bacteria from my display system in the living room into the quarantine tank. It's a good way to get the system kickstarted and ready for any fish. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take one of these pads, this one right here up at the top's perfect, put it in my cup and I'm gonna take it over to the quarantine tank. 10 seconds later. All right guys, here's the quarantine tank and here's that filter pad I was just talking about from the tank. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in this back chamber and let that sit for another couple days and let the beneficial bacteria start soaking into the system. All right guys, it's been a couple days since I added the filter floss pad from the lagoon tank. And the reason I did this was so I could add beneficial bacteria into this quarantine system. I'm in a way seeding it with beneficial bacteria from my display tank and by adding it in here, I can get it into the cycle and get it going throughout the system. Now doing this helps get the water a little bit more prepared 
for having a fish in it. Now, that was the reason I did this, and it's something that's good to do whenever you're setting up a quarantine tank, is to have it go through a mini cycle and make sure that you're adding beneficial bacteria to the system and it's not just straight salt water. When deciding how you want to quarantine fish, there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. But for me, I found two methods that have worked really well for me in the past and have given me some success. The first one is an observation and then medication. This is a period in time where I'm going to observe and watch the fish pretty closely and make sure I don't see any signs of development of disease or parasite. Now if I do, then that's when I initiate medication. That being said, that would restart my quarantine time, which is usually a 30 day process. The second method that I've used with great success is my copper method. Now, using copper, you want to make sure you get a good copper source from an aquarium shop or aquarium store online. You want to get a copper testing kit, and then you want to get your system at a 1.0 ppm before you add any fish. Now, once you add the fish, they're going to be at 1.0, and over at the next 48 hours, you're going to raise it up to 1.5. After that period, you're going to have another 48 hour period where you're going to raise it to 2.0. At 2.0, you're at the therapeutic level for copper to help out with diseases and parasites. Now these are my two regimes that I've used in the past and they've given me good success. Now don't take my word for it, but it's what I've used. Another important thing to remember when you're quarantining fish is maintaining good oxygen and ammonia levels. Now that's what I talked about earlier with the ammonia alert badge. This is a really good tool to help you make sure you're not getting too high of ammonia levels within your quarantine system. Those two things are the biggest things really to look out for within a brand new quarantine system. Now that being said, the alert is a really helpful tool, but the best thing that can really help you is water changes. Now, Water changes can help replenish almost everything and at the same time can lower your nitrates, bring down your ammonia, and it can replenish your oxygen levels. So with that being said, make sure you're watching your ammonia levels and your oxygen levels. Last but not least, what you're going to need for your quarantine tank is, well, a fish to quarantine. That being said, you're going to want to head down to your local fish store. That's right, your local fish store, you should support them. And you're going to look for the fish you've been wanting. If you see that fish, you're going to start watching that fish and observe it for a little period of time while you're walking around the store. You're going to look for any signs of diseases or parasites. That being said, you want to look at the other fish in that tank. Also, all the fish in general in the systems. If you get that information going, then you can kind of have an idea of what you're getting into when you purchase that fish. But with that being said, guys, that's a little quick tip about what you want to do when you're heading in to pick out your fish. That's it for this week's episode, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed and maybe learned a little bit about quarantining in general. If you guys have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below in the comments section. With that being said, hope you guys enjoyed. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you on next week's episode.